let's schmooze, Jonathan. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, so uh, we got a couple weeks left of the congressional year. Any bill that, let me tell you, let me explain how it works. If a bill passes the House of Representatives and doesn't pass the Senate, then it doesn't go to the president to sign, obviously. And then come January with the new Congress, they got to start all over from scratch. Mm. So that bill that passed the House of Representatives with Democratic control doesn't continue. It's got to start all over from the beginning. Ooh. Sad for those bills. Yeah. Right? So now what happens is the House of Representatives passes a bill, has to go to the Senate, they pass a different bill, and then it has to be negotiated between the two, and then they have to come up with another final oh vote gosh. between the two and give it to the president, and this all has to happen in the next two to three weeks. Do you think that that's actually so going to happen? So let me tell you what is on the table for immigration reform. Okay. All right, and then we'll see. Number one is... Dreamers, Dream Act. Uh, Senators Christian Cinema, Democrat of Arizona, and Republican Tom Tillis. Now, the Dream Act has passed the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. Give amnesty to all the Dreamers. All right, everybody knows who the Dreamers are. Kids who came here very young age mm -hmm. and grew up here and now adults. Um, and it passed the House of Representatives, but if the Senate doesn't pass a Dream Act bill, then it's got to start all over from scratch again in January because we got a new Congress. And what has this been going on now? Ten years already. Right. Okay. So uh, they're trying to find bipartisan support in the Senate. We remember we got to get to sixty votes in the Senate to pass the Dream Act. That means there's fifty Democrats. That means they got to have ten Republicans to pass it. And Chris, uh, Kristen Cinema and Republican Tom Tillis of North Carolina, they've outlined a proposal that they said could provide the legalization for two million dreamers, mm. uh, basically an amnesty brought to the United States in exchange, if they can get ten, nine more Republicans, because Tom Tillis is a co-sponsor of the bill, $25 billion in increases in border security. Wow. And basically what that increase would be is to build detention facilities for anybody who is trying to cross the border uh, to apply for asylum or run across the border, more to put more ICE officers on the border, DHS officers on the border, uh, more equipment for security and everything else, more border fence, more detention facilities, and, uh, and in addition, hiring of more judges mm. and overhauling the asylum system so that if you do try to cross the border and you're captured, or you uh, go to apply for asylum at the border, you would be either stay in Mexico and wait, wait for your hearing, or if you insist on coming across, be in a detention center, and they would have an expedited hearing with more judges and immigration officers and try to overhaul this entire system. So, I mean, does that, that doesn't sound bad. It doesn't bad. sound terrible. It doesn't sound terrible. It doesn't sound I mean, terrible. I would, because, I would rather it right. be an actual, you know, yeah. facility that's, you know, that they put money to, probably well, better stay. Well, you know. right now, what's happening is people are jumping, literally jumping over the fence. Right. And they sit there. Right now, today, people jumping over the fence. Right. Okay. They sit there and wait for Border Patrol to come. Border Patrol doesn't have facilities to house them. Exactly. That's what I'm so saying. what they do is they release them into the United States mm -hmm. and tell them, go back, come back and see a judge in one, two, three years. So a lot of people are entering the country even without legitimate asylum claims. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people with legitimate asylum claims who are scared to jump over the fence are sitting mm -hmm. on the wrong side of the fence. Right, right. And can't even get get a hearing. So maybe, maybe this would be, maybe, I don't maybe, know. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it would be more humane. I don't know. I like the idea of... I like the idea of the amnesty for the dreamers. That's certainly Obviously, humane. Obviously, that's, yeah. So we'll see if that happens. I mean, I do like them getting more judges because yes. then we can, you know. Speed this speed up a little it, bit. Speed right. it up. Because people with legitimate asylum claims are waiting years. Exactly. And, you know, and they're crazy. all calling me, you know, people who filed in 2016, 2017, 2018, who are waiting on asylum claims with legitimate claims 
are calling me now, and I'm filing mandamuses for everybody, mm -hmm. literally threatening the government or actually actually filing the mandamus or a threat of a mandamus with a federal court to get them to to move on an interview. Yeah. So, I mean, certainly we need more money uh, into this. So that's one thing. We'll see if that happens. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, Senators Michael Bennett, Democrat of Colorado, and Mike, I guess this is his name, Crapo? <laughs> Maybe. We'll see if he's Crapo or not after, <laughs> after right. whether this passes or not. <laughs> They're negotiating a bill uh, that's already passed the House of Representatives as well. These are senators to provide an amnesty for farm workers. And although the negotiations are underway, nobody knows whether or not this will pass. But if I had to choose, if I had to take a guess on which one would pass, the farm workers or the uh, amnesty for the dreamers, my guess is that farm workers has a better chance. I would say that too. Because working. <laughs> because right. the Republicans who are in the Senate come from the farm country. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so it's to their benefit right. to be able to legalize farm workers for their particular constituents who are the farmers. You always got to see what the benefit is going to be right, for right. them. So that's why I would have said the so same. So this is how the farm work amnesty would look like. Mm -hmm. Long-time law-abiding, undocumented agricultural workers will be able to apply for what's called certified agricultural worker status. And the certified agricultural worker candidates would not be subject to deportation while their applications are being considered, and their employers would not be sanctioned for hiring illegal aliens, or undocumented aliens. We don't like to say the word illegal. Certification would grant five and a half years of legal residency including spouse and children. And those after five and a half years of continuing to work on a farm. So you would be required to continue your work on a farm for five years. Mm -hmm. You can't just say, I worked on a farm for the last 90 days, give me a green card, and now I'm going off to be a sales person at Macy's. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can't go work at Macy's. <laughs> on right? the farm? You gotta stay on the farm. Dang. Macy's will have to wait. <laughs> For five uh, years. For five and a half years. And then, at that point, you would be able to adjust your status. But you would be temporary legal residents for those five and a half years. And then be able to adjust because there is a shortage of farm workers. Mm -hmm. And people are running across the border for jobs, low-paying jobs, mm -hmm. um, with bad labor conditions. So these would be wages that would be equal to American citizens. So the wages of the undocumented workers would rise. They would be, if you want to get your green card, be required to continue to work on the farm for five and a half years with better labor conditions, better salary, get conditional residence for you and your family, and then after the five and a half years, uh, apply for your green card. And one thing that, that they have written into this law is that you're not tied to work for one farm. So you can, you can, as this certified agricultural worker, if you can find a better job somewhere else, mm -hmm. go change jobs and go work at another farm. Okay. So you're not tied as an indentured servant, because it sounds like almost like indentured servitude yeah. for five and a half yeah. years. So you wouldn't be tied to that. You can go, they just want you to stay in the farming industry. Okay. Okay, but go work at a farm anywhere you want in the United States, yeah. as long as you continue to work on a farm. Um, and for those who do not qualify, they would be able to go back into H-2A status, which is the temporary work visas for farmers, and then be able to travel back and forth on temporary work visas, Okay. but wouldn't be able to get a green card. So those are two possibilities. Mm -hmm. Another possibility in the next two and a half to three weeks is the EGLE Act, which is the Equal Access to Green Cards for Legal Employment Act. And what that's really going to help is especially uh, the Indian tech workers, because what that's going to do is that's going to eliminate, that's going to eliminate the per country cap on all employment cases. So that huge wait list for India and, you know, and there's some other countries as well, China, Mexico, uh, those will all go away because the per country cap will be lifted. So uh, people who are on H-1Bs and then filed for 
adjustment of status uh, or an I-140 and are waiting to file for adjustment of status, but, but for the priority dates not being current, those will all go away. So those people will get green cards faster. And they're going to increase the cap to 15% of green cards to one country for family-based. So people from Mexico, Philippines, India, China, uh, those countries that have longer waits for family-based cases, for example, Philippines has a 30-year wait for brothers oh and sisters. Uh, though many of those waits will get reduced as well. That may have a chance to pass. That may have a chance to pass as well. So um, we'll see. Those are the three big possibilities. Okay. Uh, and we'll see between now and the end of the year. Meanwhile, Jonathan, the an analysis from the Pew Research Center published on Thursday found that over 900,000 U.S. immigrants became U.S. citizens in 2022. Mm. And there's still a couple weeks left to go. Yeah, so including almost, some family members of my own. Yeah, oh well, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. So probably by the time the year is over, my guess is that probably very close to one million people will be newly minted U.S. citizens in the year 2022. Is and, that pretty high? That's pretty. Well, high. that represents the third highest number of immigrants ever becoming U.S. citizens wow. in, uh, since they've been keeping track. Now, I can tell you from my own, from my own practice, the one case that's going pretty fast is naturalization cases. Mm. So when we file a naturalization case, six, six, seven months, boom, interview, and uh, you're scheduled for your swearing in. So naturalization cases are taking, they're putting a lot of resources into naturalization. Those cases are running pretty smooth and pretty fast. It's the processing for the green cards that's taking forever. Mm. Now, interestingly, I don't know why this is the answer, why, why, why this is. Guess what country, guess what, every country, citizens from every country has had an increase in naturalization. So citizens of Ethiopia, Jamaica, you name the country, UK, mm -hmm. G Germany, Japan, I don't know, you name the country. Every country, citizens from around the world has seen an increase in naturalization to become a United States citizen except for one country has been there. It has been a lower number of those citizens becoming from that one particular country. What do you think it is? I don't know the answer why that would be. Take a guess. I wouldn't know. China. China. Yeah. Really? Chinese citizens are becoming are, are the only country where there is a lower number of naturalized citizens coming from that country than is, from any other country. Is, is it because less of them are There's a lot of trying? Chinese. There's a lot of Chinese. That are and, trying? I don't know if trying, but there's a lot of Chinese in the United States of America. Right. Um, I don't know why. I don't know the answer why that would be, why China and not is the only country. Hmm. Uh, but I thought that was pretty interesting, too. And uh, good news for Haitians, Jonathan. Oh, good. Yeah, the, yesterday the Biden administration announced it's going to have a new TPS program for Haitians. So if you are Haitian and you are in the United States as of November... 6th of 2022 and they uh, estimate that there's over a hundred thousand haitians who are going to qualify for the tps program temporary protected status that means you do not have to go back to haiti that means you can get a work permit and you can even get an advanced parole travel document to travel back and forth and uh and you know what's also great about that hmm. is those haitians who entered without inspection who came and are now perhaps fell in love and are married to u.s citizens who otherwise can't adjust their status after they get TPS and they can get their work permit and their advanced parole travel document can go back and forth, mm. re-enter on advanced parole and then adjust their status. Wow. Yeah. There's, um, there are about 101,000 Haitians in the United States who already have temporary protected status, 53,000 in the pipeline, and now another 100,000 will, uh, will be entitled to it. I like that. And uh, the Real ID Act, we said it at the top of the show, mm -hmm. it is now being delayed again. Do you know when it went into when it was passed, the Real ID Act? When, when was it? Because I, because I. 2005. That's when it was. Dang, that's. And it was passed right after, right, you know, in, in, re, in the, reaction to 9-11. 9-11, right. Right. And, and the 9-11 the hijackers got on an airplane with shoddy identification. Mm. So the U.S. government says we want to make sure 
that we have good identification for people getting on the airplane. Yeah. Well, guess what? 20 years later, they still are not <laughs> instituted it. Is that Now, if that is not an indictment on U.S. bureaucracy, I don't know what is. So what's the reason? So, what's the holdup? So guess what? Uh, now, according to the Department of Homeland Security, I'm not part of these meetings, right. <laughs> okay? But I'll tell you what the Department of Homeland Security says. They are, it was supposed to be implemented uh, as of May 3rd, 2023. So I was even thinking that yeah, I don't have a real ID right. yet. I was thinking, okay, I got to, you know, January, Same. February, I got to go make my appointment with motor vehicles Same. to get it. Yeah. And guess what? They don't pushed it to. off now to May 7th, 2025. That's good news for people who are terrified to go on an airplane. Right, yeah. So you can show any ID you want again now. So is that the same for, for anybody? For everybody. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, how, so, how about for so undocumented? Well, you can just show your passport. They can show their home passport? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Oh, wow. Now, a statement from the Department of Homeland Security said the extension is necessary in part to address the lingering impacts of COVID on the ability to obtain real ID driver's license or identification cards. I think really what it comes down to is they're saying to themselves, well, you know, we haven't had any terrorist <laughs> right. attacks. Yeah, Everything seems to be running smoothly. Why upset the Apple cart? If we insist on real ID, it'll lead to a lot of confusion in transportation. Mm -hmm. And we're just getting over COVID. And the last thing we need is more confusion. Yeah. That would be my guess. I mean, that's what I sense. read into it. Makes sense. Yeah. I just think what a joke. 20 years later. 20 whole years. 20 years later. <laughs> and we're still waiting for Real ID Act to come into effect. <laughs> it's an indictment on the U.S. bureaucracy. Mm. And, uh, and our very good friend here at the show, Donald Trump. <clears throat> I read this earlier. Friend. Friend, right. <laughs> The uh, Trump Organization was found guilty today on multiple charges of criminal tax fraud, falsifying business records connected to a 15-year scheme to defraud tax authorities. Basically, what they did was this. What? They, they took their personal expenses and they made it business expenses mm -hmm. and wrote it off as a business expense. Mm -hmm. My apartment, business expense. Jeez. My children's education, that's a <laughs> business expense. And they hid it from the tax authorities and when it was discovered, they continued to insist those were all legitimate business expenses. Like. And finally, you know, the weasel, Wesselberg, he flipped on Trump because he got indicted himself. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Trump Organization now, unfortunately, here's the unfortunate thing. What? Corporations don't go to jail. Mm. I've never seen a corporation go to jail. All corporations can do is pay a fine. I was about to say, can't they go bankrupt? Yeah, but they're not going to go bankrupt because they face the maximum penalty is $1.61 million. Oh, and they can just pay is, that off. Which is, I would say, chump change, which is Trump change. Trump change. Trump change to Trump. Dang. What is $1.6 million to That's Trump? Right. Nothing. Okay. But what is, there is, they're also facing a $250 million civil lawsuit for the same crimes in New York State, maybe That's probably why they do it is because they know maybe, just pay it off. Maybe, maybe that will cost him more money. But corporations don't go to jail. Now there was a the lot people, of there though? was a lot of people do. There was a lot of there was a lot of testimony that Donald Trump wrote these checks, mm. approved these checks, approved this accounting scheme. I'm waiting for someone to have the kahunas. I was about to say, there's no proof now, huh? The kahunas... To come out... To come out and indict him. Because it all came out that he did it. Well, who's going who's gonna to have the kahunas to in personally indict him that Donald Trump will go to jail? But, you know what kahunas are, Jonathan? Yes, I do know what you, kahunas are. Does everybody kahunas. know what the kahunas are? Yes. Because yes. right now, all these DAs, they don't have kahunas they until don't. they go after Trump. When is that going to happen? I don't think it's ever going to happen. <laughs> we'll see. Well, I can tell you is corporations don't go to jail. Yeah. And by the way, he's he has he's running again for president. Partly, I, my guess is to prevent him from getting charged with a crime. Mm -hmm. Because if you're running for president and they get charged with a crime, you know what he's going to say is it's all political. <laughs> all right. I mean, that's the best excuse ever. This is all political. Huh. And if anything, it would it would it would 
you know, get his people more frothed, frothed at the mouth. Right. You know what froth is? Yes. You know, like the dog with rabies yes. with the yes. saliva coming out. My bet is that's why, probably more than anything, why he's running for president. Because nobody wants him to be president anymore. Who wants him? He would lose. But do you think he's going to lose? I think he may win the Republican nomination, but I can't. But unless something drastic happens in the opinions of the American people, mm -hmm. he hasn't won an election since 2016. Right. He, he lost the midterms in 2018. He lost the presidential election in 2020. And all of his candidates in 2022 <laughs> lost the midterm elections. They thought the Republicans were going to sweep and the Democrats <laughs> still control the Senate. Yeah. So nobody likes him. Nobody likes at, on a general election. But in the primary election, you get people who are less, I don't want to say crazies, but people who are less uh, politically motivated do not vote in primaries. They vote in the general election. Right. So you get people who are more politically motivated to come out, and those would be his rabid supporters. Yeah. That's why he keeps win winning the primary but can't win the election because generally, the general electorate doesn't want him. Maybe because he just dined at Mar-a-Lago with a white nationalist mm -hmm. by the name of Nick Fuentes and Kanye. <sighs> I don't even know man. what to say about Kanye anymore. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I was one that used to say, you know, he's kind of misunderstood. You know, maybe hear him out. He, his delivery is off, but uh, I can't, I can't, I, I can't rock with him no more. No. I can't. I can't. Sorry. No. 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 Nah. Um, in a statement, the White House said bigotry, hate, and anti-Semitism have absolutely no place in America, including Mar-a-Lago. Holocaust denial is repugnant and dangerous, and it must be forcefully condemned. And yet Donald Trump is having dinner, basically in his home. Hmm. And Nick Fuentes, by the way, is, the, is considered one of the top Holocaust deniers in the entire world. That's crazy. Yeah. So, and even went on Alex Jones show. That was the guy with the, uh, that was the guy with, uh, who got sued by all the Sandy Hook. Oh yeah, for saying that it for was For saying that it was a it was fake. fake. Right. Like, and oop. he, so Alex Jones was another loser. Yeah. Okay, Kanye went on with him and, um, he, he, saying he, that he, he said he the same say, thing all could, over again. He could see good in yeah. Hitler and yeah, all that because yeah. he created a microphone that I use. And I don't know if Hitler created a microphone. I was like, what? I know, I, I know, I know, I know Hitler created gas chambers. I know Hitler created uh, uh, the plan to exterminate entire culture, kill yeah. six million people yeah. in cold blood, put them, put them uh, naked into a shower and gas them. Day I, after day, week after week. Regardless, of I know he, Hitler yeah. did that. I don't know about a microphone. Yeah, and and even if he did, yeah. he doesn't deserve any yeah. type of you know praise mm -hmm. for for creating anything. Yeah. Thanks for watching. For more Brad Show Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.